Hi everybody. Welcome to a fun week of Technique Tuesday. I am Anastasia Radloff, aka Stamp and Blondie, and thank you for joining me for an extra fun and exciting week full of techniques. Now let me just make sure that I am live here on Facebook and that I can follow along with your comments. Uh, there we go. If you're watching, make sure to comment hi. Let me know where you're watching from. It's always fun to see where everybody is joining me from each week. Now, I hope you all had an amazing and exciting last week. Um, I received my first COVID vaccine yesterday, so my arm is still a little sore, but I'm excited to finally get back to, um, you know, hosting in-person events where if people feel comfortable, they are able to remove their mask. So we had our team meeting this past weekend and it was great to see everybody back. And I am just ready to get back to in-person events and back to what they call normal now. So hi, Cindy. Hi, Becky. Hi, Kay. Hi, Connie. Thank you for joining me this week. Now, today I'm going to show you two projects featuring the Whiskey Business Stamp Set from our 21-22 annual catalog. Now, this is a carryover set from our previous annual catalog and it is a perfect set for creating masculine projects with these fancy folds that I'm going to bring you today. Now I have two projects featuring what they call the bridge technique and I'm going to show you two different ways on how to create these. Now while these projects pack a, pack a big punch, it's actually quite easy to create and once you see how everything comes together, you'll be able to create these projects as well. So let's go ahead and switch the camera so we can, oh, I hit the wrong button. Just a second. Ah. Let's see. Nope, wrong button again. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Let's see, I had it all set up. There we go. <laughs> I had it all set up ready to go and then I hit the wrong thing. So, you know, technology, gotta love it. All right, so first off, we always have our weekly prize patrol. So if you are new, what is Prize Patrol? This is a free offer that I do, and all you have to do is share this video with your friends. You're gonna wanna make sure that you comment shared below because sometimes Facebook is wonky and doesn't always let me know when people have shared. Um, especially due to your security settings, I may not be able to see that you shared, so definitely make sure once you share this video to comment below that you did. Now last week, I featured some really fun hand-penned uh, stamp set projects, and we used the new soft succulent woven ribbon, or sorry, open weave ribbon. Now our winner from last week's prize patrol is Connie, and I know Connie's watching, so hi Connie, thank you for sharing my video last week. You are the winner of a full roll of soft succulent open weave ribbon. So congratulations, Connie. Thank you for watching and for sharing my video. Now this week is gonna be an extra fun prize patrol. So on my projects this week, I am featuring the Whiskey Business Stamp Set. This is from, like I mentioned, our annual catalog. And our prize patrol for this week is the Whiskey Business Stamp Set. Perfect for creating those masculine projects and I love it because it has some really fun and punny sentiments to go with it. So this is a cling mount stamp set, is a red rubber stamp set and it adheres to our clear blocks and this is our prize patrol item for this week. So make sure to share this video and you can be entered to win our Whiskey Business stamp set. Yes, congratulations, Connie. I'm so happy you're watching this live and you got to see. All right, so um, if your wish list from the new annual catalog is long, don't forget about our new Join Plus promotion for this month only. Normally, to join Stampin' Up, it is $99 and you get to choose $125 worth of product. But during the month of May, you get to choose $155 worth of product for $99 as well. So over $55 of your choice and free products. This can be anything from ink pads, Stampin' Blends, cardstock, anything from both of our catalogs of your choice. This is an amazing deal and our Stampin' Blondie team is a wonderful 
group of ladies. Now, you don't have to teach classes. You don't have to host events. You can become a happy shopper and receive a 20 to 25% discount on all of your future orders. Now, this is a great, great sign up special to become a demonstrator with Stampin' Up. And if your wish list is over $99 from the annual catalog, you will not want to miss out on this promotion. The details on how to sign up and uh, all the information on how to join the Stampin' Blind team and what we're all about can be found in the description of this video at the end of the video. So there will be a link in the description that you can click on. So don't forget that you will totally regret not signing up during this promotion. If you let that go, you are going to want to join us. We are a great group of ladies nationwide and we have so much fun when we gather together, both in person and virtually. So no matter where you live in the United States, you can join us in the Stampin' Blondie team. All right, also another exciting thing that I have. So my uh, In Color Club, uh, sign up deadline has been extended until this Sunday. I know a couple of you reached out to me and said that you missed the sign up um, deadline of April 30th and how can you sign up for this? So it's five months, five colors, and one ink color collection. Each month you'll receive a package of a full package of cardstock, a full roll of open weave ribbon, a full classic stamp and pad, refill, one stamp and write marker, two stamp and blends markers, 20 in color jewels, eight six by six designer series paper pieces, four ombre gift bags, um, six by six, so this is actually eight pieces of six by six in color shimmer vellum paper, and a partridge in a pear tree. So each month you will also receive a hand stamp card for myself. If you can see, let me see. Oh, it's all along my back table here. I've been setting up for my in color club this past week. So your first month will be delayed a little bit because um, until you get caught up uh, next month. So you will be a little delayed for this month's color of polished pink. And then next month, as we move into our next in color, you'll be on track with everybody else. So deadline is May 23rd. The link to register will be in the description of this video when I'm done. Um, if you missed out on the first sign up, this is the final sign up for In Color Club. So it's a great way to budget all of your purchases over five months. And at the end of the five months, you have all of the color collection items for your crafting stash. So five months, five colors, one collection, and it's a great way to budget all your purchases for the new In Color Club. Deadline is this Sunday and will not be extended anymore. All right, let's jump into our really fun projects that we have today featuring the Whiskey Business stamp set. So our first project that we are gonna work on is this really fun bridge project. Now this actually will fit in a normal um, envelope size that for our normal card size, eight and a half by five and a half. So this will fit in a regular size envelope. This is, uh, the technique is called the bridge card. This is the traditional bridge. Our second one is kind of an accordion bridge. But this features the new Simply Elegant Designer Series paper, and this paper is beautiful. It features copper, silver, and gold foiling without the paper, or throughout the paper, and it's perfect for masculine and feminine projects. I like paper that you can do both for that. Now on the opposite side of the designer series paper is your traditional uh, flat design. So there's metallic on one side and a regular designer series paper on the back. So you can really switch it up with your projects. Our second one, like I said, is this really fun accordion card. Now, unfortunately, this will not fit in a regular um, envelope size. You do have to go up a size for envelopes, but look at how fun this project is. And it just stands up like your normal, uh, like your normal card. So you have this one, little shorter bridge card here, and then we have a bigger bridge card here. And then you can see the difference between the two. So we are gonna start with this copper card here. And if you're following along, always remember I have this free PDF that is available on my website right now. It has all of the item names, item numbers, prices, and the dimensions to all of these projects today. 
So you can print out this free PDF, pair it with this video, and you'll be able to create these projects step-by-step -step with me at your own schedule. So I have both of these available on my blog um, right now. You can go grab that once you're done watching this video, of course. All right. I have another one of these uh, hanging up where you guys can't see because it has all my dimensions that I've got on here just so I can tell you guys the right thing as I make my projects. All right, I've pre-cut some designer series paper just to save us a little time because we are gonna be doing some scoring today. And to use that, I'm gonna be using my Simply Scored board. Now, this is found on page 151 of our annual catalog, Simply Scored Scoring Tool. If you've never used a scoring tool before, that's okay, I'll show you how to use it. It's very easy. If you like to create a lot of 3D projects or even cards, this score tool is perfect for that. Um, I score all of my cards for my classes, my projects that I do here for Makers Monday and Technique Tuesday, right here using my scoreboard. And you can see the two lines that I use the most, five and a half and four and a quarter. Now the best part about this board is at every eighth of an inch, there is a little marking and then lines. So you can create a bunch of different 3D projects and score your papers uh, right here on the scoreboard. It's $30 and it comes with a scoring tool. And then it also has, so there's this little hinge here at the top. It has these little scoring markers. And then these little pegs fit into the sections here so that if you're doing a bunch of scoring, instead of measuring each time, you can just put these little pegs in and um, see exactly where you're gonna score every time. All right, we've got our scoreboard here and I have a piece of basic gray cardstock. This is four and a quarter by eight inches long. We're gonna score on the eight inch long side here. We're gonna score at one and a quarter, at two and a half, at five and a half, and six and three fourths. Okay, so that's gonna give us this uh, evenly scored piece of paper here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna need our, where did I put it, my bone folder. So we're gonna fold this kind of like an accordion. So this part here is going to fold in. Let me bring my project in so I can see, just to make sure. We're gonna fold that here and we're gonna score with our bone folder. And then this part here, we're gonna fold backwards. So it's gonna create this little 90 degree angle there. And we're gonna use our bone folder to really crisp up those lines. Same thing on this side, we're gonna fold in and score, use or burnish using our bone folder. And then we're gonna fold back again using our bone folder to really crisp up our lines. So we have this little card back here. And we're just gonna put that off to the side. Now the bridge part of this is actually this strip of foil card, or foil sheet, it's copper that I am using. And this is at one and one fourth by five and a half. And this is what, once we get our designer series paper on here, this is what's actually gonna bridge the two sides together and hold them in place. Now before we're gonna do that, we're gonna add our designer series paper. And I'm gonna be using Tombow liquid glue for this. I've got four pieces of designer series paper from that beautiful, simply elegant paper. So like I said, it has a foil sheet on one side. This one is basic gray, silver, and gold foil. This one is our basic white and uh, copper, silver, and gold. And then you can see the back side. you just have your basic black, very vanilla, and uh, basic white as well. So I have two different designs here, and I'm gonna kind of show you the side. So this is where I'm gonna put my two different designs at. You could do these all the same designer series paper if you want, but I decided to do two different ones. And these pieces are one inch by four inches long. And I'm just gonna use liquid glue. I'm using liquid glue on these because it has a little bit of give to it. 
if I don't put my designer series paper right in the middle of my bridge page, I can easily kind of smoosh it around and just really put it exactly where I want it. All right, we've got the same thing on the other side. And we're gonna put our designer series paper right on there. Okay, and then these two are gonna go on these little strips on the inside. So they're kind of hidden when it's standing up, but as you can see from the side, that's where those pieces really shine. Uh, you could do brighter designer series paper, but I wanted my white pieces on the outside really to be the focal point. So I kind of did almost a tone on tone here with that basic gray and the uh, foil designer series paper there. One last time with our paper here and there we go that's going to be our middle inside of our card I have a piece of copper foil sheet this is another one here this one is at um what size did I do this one uh, I'm not sure but let's get the ruler out I guess I didn't write this one down this one is at two and three fourths by four inches long. So two and three fourths by four. This is gonna go right in the back of our card. Now I like to use liquid glue when I'm using copper foil sheets just because it does have a little more grip to it than our stamp and seal. If you're gonna use stamp and seal on copper foil paper, you're gonna wanna use the stamp and seal plus that's really gonna hold that copper foil paper down, especially because copper foil paper is not porous. It'll have a little tougher time to use um, just connecting with regular stamp and seal. All right, this is a piece of basic white cardstock, two and a half by three and three fourths. So just a half, a quarter inch smaller on each side. And we are gonna use the stamps that say, straight up, you're the best. We're gonna stamp this using basic gray ink. And we're gonna stamp it right in the middle of our background piece right there. So we're gonna stamp that. And we're gonna adhere that to our copper foil sheet. Again, I'm gonna use liquid glue just because it'll have a better bond with that foil sheet, especially because it's so slick on the top there. Okay, there we go. And we're just gonna set this off to the side while we work on our uh, whiskey decanter. I have a piece of just regular basic white cardstock, just a scrap piece here. And we're gonna be doing some coloring with Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna be using Cinnamon Cider and Pool Party. And the pool party will really make this decanter come to life more. It may be kind of hard to see, but when you stamp it with just regular uh, Tuxedo Black Memento ink, it's really flat. With the pool party, you'll bring that decanter really to life to kind of make it look more glossy and like glass when you use it. So we've got our decanter here. And I'm gonna have to use our clear block E because it's bigger than our clear block D. Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And we're just gonna stamp that on our scratch piece. And we're gonna use this little rocks glass as well. And that's gonna be same thing with our Tuxedo Black Memento ink. Now I'm gonna cover that up so I don't get ink all over my hands. And I'm because I'm using Stampin' Blends, I want to have my workspace covered. We've got alcohol ink base markers and the more you blend them together, the more it can bleed through your paper. So we're gonna start off with our dark cinnamon cider and we're just gonna kinda do a little swoop down the side of our drinks here. We're gonna come in with the light cinnamon cider and we're just gonna color in the decanter really quick to blend those colors together so that swoop isn't as noticeable, but it still has the dark to it. 
And I'm using the brush end just to color this in more quick. Here, we're going to follow the line, color this in, blend in that dark. And here's where the fun part comes. So you can see before I even start how kind of flat looking this is. It doesn't really have too much dimension to it, but let's go ahead and we're gonna use the light pool party blend. And we're just gonna do some quick highlights here. And I'm just gonna follow some of the glass patterns. Um, on here, there's little uh, etches it looks like in the glass. So we're just gonna follow some of that down the side here, a little bit in the middle, and then down here at the bottom, we're just gonna follow the pattern of that. Some more up here, and that really helps make it come more to life. I hope the light pull party is really showing up. And then on this glass here, same thing, I'm just gonna go down the side, color in, just to give it a little bit of depth and to actually make it look glass. We've got our, because this stamp set unfortunately doesn't have any dies to it, we are gonna fussy cut out our two pieces here. Now, because these are very simple shapes, it's really easy to cut, cut these out with scissors. Very quick, very easy. You can get as close to the lines as you want. I'm just gonna do a quick cut for you guys here, but following the lines, with my scissors. And then with the, the topper, you can really get in there, but I don't like to get too close on the inside of the topper. I like to give it some white space so that you can see the rounded edge of your cuts. And in here a little bit. You can see when I fussy cut, I hold my scissors steady and I move the paper with my left hand. This gives me more control over my cutting and you'll just slide your paper around while you, uh, in your left hand or your right hand, depending on which way you're gonna cut. But I'm holding my scissors steady and my paper is turning. For me, this gives me better control with fussy cutting. The shimmer, crystal shimmer effects would look really fun on this. The only thing is with shimmer effects, you have to let it dry a little bit. And with Technique Tuesday, it would just take too long. You could hit it with a heat tool, um, but the shimmer crystal effects would look really good with this. That's a great idea, Cindy. You should do that and post it and let's see it. <laughs> All right, so we've got our decanter, we have our rocks glass, and we're gonna build our bridge now. This is the piece of copper foil paper, which is one and one fourth by five and a half. And then I have a piece. This is the other side of that um, designer series paper. It has this really fun, like 1920s art deco look to it. And it is gold foil paper, but we are gonna use the back side, that as the back side, because I really want my focus to be on these two pieces of designer series paper sticking out there. So we're gonna add some of our Tombow liquid glue right to the middle of our bridge here. Now, if you're gonna gift this to somebody, um, you'll before you put your bridge on, now is the time when you would write your little sentiment here in the middle of this. Um, you wanna make sure you do that before you put the bridge on or it may be kinda awkward to get a pen in there to be able to write anything. But we're gonna take this now and we're just gonna add a little bit of glue to each of the ends. You don't wanna add too much um, because it could ooze out and then not stick. Well, stick in the wrong places. There we go. So I'm just adding my bridge on one side to let it adhere here. And then we're gonna fold that side over, lay this side flat make sure that sticks on our other side. That is the basic outline of our bridge card. And now we're just going to use our Tombow liquid glue to decorate. And we're going to put that here, our decanter. 
And then I'm gonna use a, oh, I wanna add a little bit more glue to the topper on the left back side of it, just so it sticks at the top here. And then I'm gonna use a Stampin' Dimensional on this rocks glass to get that to stand out from our decanter and give it a little bit of height right there. And that is our first bridge project featuring the Whiskey Business stamp set and the Simply Elegant Designer Series paper. Now this outline and layout could be really used for any type of card. Um, you could switch up the designer series paper, switch up the, um, the images, and you could use this as a birthday card, a sympathy card, however you decide to use this as um, changing up the designer series paper. So here's our first bridge project. I'm kind of moving around so you guys can see the inside designer series paper. Now, like I had mentioned, this will fit in a regular sized envelope and it is very simple to create and it just stands up really fun. You don't even have to hold anything and it will stand right up. So I'm glad to see all the comments that you guys really like this one. I like the, the copper and the basic gray together. It's just such a fun, fun project. So this is our first one. I, I'm glad that you guys like that project. <laughs> Out of, the, out of the two, that probably is my favorite one that we're gonna be doing today. All right, our second one. This is the Bigger Bridge Project. This is a really big card. Like I mentioned, you would have to buy a, a really big kind of greeting uh, card envelope or you could make your own if you're into creating envelopes. Now this is a bridge card, but kind of a different a piece to it. It has this middle section where you could put like a, a cup of, I don't know, maybe a rocks glass and some little of those little mini alcohol bottles and create kind of a project and a gift all in one. I think that would be really fun to give somebody. So this is going to be our second project today. And let me grab all the supplies we're going to need for this. Now for this one, you need a piece of 10 inch by six and a half inch basic black cardstock. We're gonna bring in our scoreboard again and on this long 10 inch side, we're gonna score at two and a half and five. And that's it for this piece. We also need another piece of basic black cardstock. This one's at 10 inches by one and three fourths. So when you cut your piece of cardstock, so here's actually one big piece of cardstock. You will have just a little bit left over here. You can use that to embellish or whatever. But once you cut this 10 inch by six and a half inch piece, you can just cut off another one and three fourths inch piece for here. This one we're gonna score at five and seven and a half. And we're done with our scoreboard. We're gonna put that off to the side. We're gonna bring this in so I don't mess up the project here. All right, so we've got this bigger piece here that's gonna be our background to our card. Kind of like our last project, we are going to fold this one in here. Why are they called bridge cards? Um, I think because it bridges over each side and this one has a bridge because there's like the little gap and it just bridges right over. Um, I didn't come up with this technique. I came up with the designs, but not the technique. Um, but I, I, this was my first one doing this type of like giant bigger card. And, uh, you know, I normally do my projects, the little uh, fold one way kind of thing. And, you know, it, it was fun to do something different. My, uh, my best friend who's watching, Leanne, uh, we kind of come up with my theme for Makers Monday and Technique Tuesday each week. And I asked her, I said, I wanted to do a Technique Tuesday this, this week. I haven't done one in a while. And uh, what can I do? And she said, something other than a normal rectangle card. So I said, what about a bridge style card? And she said, perfect. So thank you, Leanne, something fun for you guys. So we've got our bridge here. So I folded this one here and then I accordioned it back 
to create this fun thing. I'm gonna um, use my bone folder to really crisp up those lines. And so that is the outline to our first base. And then we have this card part here. So this is gonna be our long part there. We are going to score this. Let me just make sure I'm doing it right. We're gonna fold. So we're just gonna kinda of keep that longer piece to the left. And then we're gonna kind of accordion that one. So we're gonna fold in here and back on the long piece. And I'm just, again gonna use my bone folder. A bone folder really comes in handy when you are creating 3D projects. If you don't have a bone folder, I sometimes I can't find mine. I like to use the edge of my ruler. If you have a credit card you wanna use that's expired, you can use that. Or you can just use the same credit card and then you can buy these products and make it yourself at home too. <laughs> All right, so we've got our bridge background, our bridge foreground, and now we're gonna decorate. All right, I'm using that same Simply Elegant Designer Series paper with the really pretty copper, or sorry, gold foiling. We're gonna do the gold this time. Now we have a big piece of Designer Series paper. This is at four and five eighths by six and one eighths. Big, big card. Bigger than what we are normally used to. Here's the other side of that really pretty Designer Series paper. This one, is really fun because not only can you leave it at uh, white and gold, but you can use your Stampin' Blends, the new, uh, not Stampin' Blends, the blending brushes. The new blending brushes and you can color this and the color will resist the gold. So you will have say gorgeous grape where the white is and then you'll still have the gold foiling. So that's really fun about this. Another Technique Tuesday down the road. So we're gonna use our liquid glue on the back of our designer series paper. And we're gonna put that right here, that big piece onto our background. Now I have two more designer series paper pieces. These are at four, sorry, two and a one fourth by six and one eighth. And these are just gonna go kind of like our last project. We're gonna go right on the inside and outside of our card. Yes, this Sharon, Sharon, this designer series paper is gorgeous. I, when I first saw it, you know, I love foil and the metallics. And when I first saw it, I immediately thought of like Great Gatsby in the 1920s, the, the foiling look to this and it is just so pretty and i like that there's foil on one side and then designer series paper on the back that's just the plain because you can really decide what is best for your project and this works for so many different occasions too this doesn't just have to be for masculine cards you can use this as with feminine floral projects um yes and i'm very happy because this is in our annual catalog which means this will be around until June of next year. So we're just getting started with it. It's gonna be really fun. All right, with our smaller bridge piece here, I have some other designer series paper that last for our card, we use this side. This time we're gonna use that 1920s Art Deco side. So this one is a four and seven eighths by one and five eighths. And we're gonna glue that to our long piece here. And you can actually put all of your designer series paper on before you fold your score lines. For me, it's just easier to know which side I need to put it on. Uh, sometimes I may forget and accidentally put it on the wrong side and then I'd have to peel it off. So for me, it's just easier to fold and then I know where everything's gonna go. We have, and then the last two pieces, we have two and three eighths by one and five eighths. So we've got our smaller piece here and then one last piece of designer series paper on this little fold part right there and make sure everything's on there good and then we're gonna glue this on just like our last project we're gonna glue one side at a time 
So we're just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on this left side here. And we're gonna adhere this part down. Really kind of squish it on there, make sure everything bonds and adheres. And then this one, you can cover this whole piece here in glue, because this whole thing's gonna get glued down. And you can line up your piece with the edge of the card base so that you'll know it's all straight. And you can put that there. And that is our card base for our second project here. Now it's time to decorate it. So I'm using the Hippo and Friends dies. Now these actually come um, in the annual catalog. They coordinate with the um, Hippo stamp set that's in there. But this is an amazing die set. I love all the different label pieces. And actually I only have the label, the dies. I don't even have the stamp set that goes with this. Um, I love these stitched dies here. And then these label shapes that are down here, this is what I really bought the die set for, is for these fun different labels on here. So I've die cut a these, um, the biggest size here and then the medium size label. And I've cut it in basic black and very vanilla. I actually don't use very vanilla too much in my crafting, so it was fun to get this color out and work with it. I usually tend to work with brights that coordinate with our uh, wisp or basic white the most. So um, very vanilla doesn't seem to be in my color category too often, but when I do, it it really is um, pops against whatever I'm using it with. So I am using uh, Tuxedo Black Memento Ink for our sentiment, sending you an old fashioned birthday card. Who doesn't love old fashioned birthday cards that feature an old fashioned on the outside. So I'm using Very Vanilla as my base here and this is just a scratch piece of Very Vanilla here. Same thing like our last project we're gonna use the decanter and then this time we are gonna stamp two of the little rocks glasses using tuxedo black ink but this time we are going to color it with soft suede Stampin' Blends. I wanted to go with soft suede because it coordinates more with the gold color than the cinnamon cider. Our last project, cinnamon cider is very close to our copper foil paper. So I wanted this one to coordinate with our gold foil paper. So we're gonna use the dark soft suede. Same thing as our last one, we're just gonna do little swoops of color in the glasses just to give it a little bit of depth to that and then we're going to come in with our light color i'm going to have to use the tip end because i used this for something else and i must have used it a bunch because my brush end is worn down a little bit so we're just going to swirl out that dark soft suede so that there aren't any harsh lines but it still gives the look of a shadow. We're going to color that in here and then our two rocks glasses same thing just follow the line with your blends. Color the bottom half in This gorgeous DSP will be on my next order. Yes, this is, you will not regret it. This paper is just, I mean, at first I didn't want to cut it, but the whole purpose of buying things is to use them. So I wanted to create masculine projects because, you know, Father's Day is just around the corner and these will be perfect projects to gift any guy that. Oh, we've got to use our pool party. So this time I'm going to use the dark pool party just to show you the different variations that you can do. Again, we're going to quickly highlight some of the pieces on the glass. You don't want to do too much because it's just there to give the illusion of colored 
to the glass. Again, down here, I'm just gonna do little swatches of color. And you can see it really makes a difference when you add that blue to it. And then down here, some light coloring. But here you can see, let me hold this up so you guys can see it a little better. The pool party just kind of gives it a little bit of depth for your glasses there. All right, quickly we're gonna cut these out because we, I showed you the best way to cut them out for the last project. I wish there was dies for these. I mean, I wish there was dies for all of our stamp sets. Wouldn't that just make everything so much easier? But sometimes it's quicker to fussy cut than it is to get the stamping cut and emboss machine, get the plates out, add your plates, cut. When You can just easily cut this out by hand a lot quicker sometimes. At least for me, that's what I did. So much gray paper in this new catalog, Cindy, you have no idea. This paper, I know I sucked you in with the peach project from our team meeting this last weekend. Uh, so next week for Makers Monday, I'll be featuring the Sweet as a Peach and these, I love this designer series paper too. Again, I did not want to cut that one either, but the whole purpose is to use the supplies that we buy. So make some good projects with your designer series paper. Don't just let it sit. I know it could be like, oh, I could never get this again, but that's okay. Then it means you're sharing your projects with others. Hi Mary, thanks for watching. The art expressions paper. So Cindy, you showed it all to us on Saturday. I don't have it yet, but it's on my list. That is really pretty. It's alcohol ink looking paper, but then it also has gold foiling in it too. So it is beautiful. That's another one I wouldn't want to cut into <laughs> if I had it. All right, we have our decanter and our two rocks glasses. We're gonna put together our sentiment. I So with these dies, I think you guys may be able to see it. There is, there, if I hold it in the light like kiss, there is this little line here. That's how you know which way the label is up. So we're gonna put our liquid glue on the back. Make sure the same thing is on our basic black. We're gonna put that right in the middle. And we're gonna adhere this with Stampin' Dimensionals. So we've got our label and four dimensionals on the back. You can find dimensional pieces everywhere. They like to stick to you. And we're gonna place this right in the middle of our background piece here. Now this is the best part, it lays flat. So as you're working, you can lay it flat and then you can pop it back up and it holds its shape. So for our decanter, we're going to use our liquid glue. This is gonna be our flat piece here. And then we're gonna place that overlapping our first panel. This one is going to be dimensioned. So this one's gonna have height to it. And we're gonna place that right there. And then our last one, because this already has dimensional pieces on it. So you don't want to have two pieces of dimensions. <laughs> My husband just got home. <laughs> Dogs are gonna go crazy. So we're gonna take our dimensional and we're gonna put it towards the bottom of our piece here. This will keep our dimensional, uh, our layer will be one lengthwise. So we've got this popped up and then you can put just a little bit of liquid glue at the top here, and then it'll be all one height for everything here instead of being two dimensionals tall. And then it gets a little bulky when you try to mail that. So here is our second project featuring this really fun bridge technique. This is the bigger card here. And then um, I just, I love this, I love the the look of the foil paper with the decanter. And yep, 
Uh, Sharon, do you buy sweets that don't call your name just to see if we will like it? Yes, all the time. So I try to buy things that, of course, that I love, but also that I think that you guys will love too. My stamp and style is totally different than everybody else's, but I try to buy things that um, different styles will like. Like I mentioned, this paper at first didn't jump out at me, but I think that this is really fun to be able to create some uh, art deco pieces with the foil paper and um, it really has like a, a vintage -y feel to it. All right, so let me bring in our first project here featuring the bridge technique with the copper foil paper and then the second one here with the gold foil paper as well. Let me know which project you like more. I think I like this first bridge card, but this second one here just has a really fun vintage feel to it as well. And you can see when you pair them with different papers, like this one with the basic white and this one with the very vanilla, it definitely gives it a different feel. This is brighter and then this is more vintagey. And of course, they're really fun masculine projects as well. All right, so thank you everybody for joining me for a fun week of Technique Tuesday. I wanted to create some fun 3D cards that are different than our normal rectangle projects that we create week after week. I hope you all had an amazing time and I would love to see these projects if you create them with me. Post them on my Create with Stampin' Blondie page and I would love to see what you create every day. I hope you join me next week for Makers Monday while I will create some sweet as a peach projects for you from our annual catalog. I hope to see you then and I hope you have an amazing week. Bye!